and sharing our views together. And I am happy to collaborate in this conference that has come uh, today in this shape. Uh, as a formality, I would like to heartily welcome from my own side, first of all, our foreign guests and friends, Professor Satoshi Nakamura, Professor Nenek Vizha, Professor Barbara, particularly these three persons, who at a very short notice, and I know their schedule, we were discussing in the morning that from here he has to go to Paris first, and then probably to Singapore, and then to another country within a span of one or two uh, <coughs> months itself, I mean. So I know how much hectic schedules he has, Professor Nemegela has, Professor Barbara, he is going to attend the conference tomorrow in Himachal Pradesh. And I requested my old colleague and friend, Dr. Vipin Tyagi, to bring her today, and he was very kind to bring her. We are really grateful to you, all of you, that you could come. I am particularly grateful to Professor Deepthi Mishra Sharma. See, we know each other again for the last 20, 30 years or so, working in the same areas. And that is also her greatness, generosity, that he would accept our invitation just three days ago. And then he made it, and then going to deliver an invited talk. Well, apart from that, uh, our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Nika Verma, Director General of NIC. I had my association with NIC, Vendor Prashish, he was the Director General, and Dr. Vidya Dikta, Vidya Sharma, and others. So, I know them. And uh, last week I was there for some function on Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, unfortunately, we missed you, but your colleague was there. So, it's a great association that we have. All of you. Uh, <clears throat> then our colleagues, Dr. Samudri Vijay, Mr. Karmani Shalura, Mr. Vipin Tyagi, Mr. Deepak Ghar, who is not here, and Dr. Umar Farooq from Aligarh, who would also come. You know, some of those, those persons who are giving the invited talks here, and I am really thankful to them that they also accepted our invitation to deliver these talks. And uh, the technical program you will find would be an excellent program, a very knowledgeable and diversified program in the area of AI and speech. Dr. Amita Dev, the Vice Chancellor, is at the helm of the affairs of all this function, along with Dr. Sharma. Now, who has done all this work and made this possible, we are really grateful to them. Now, just a few words about this conference, although a good introduction has been already given by Dr. Amita Dev, Dr. Sharma also, but I would just like to express a few things in relation to speech technology. So, you see, when we say about AI or machine intelligence, it's playing a great role in developing machines or computers that mimic, that mimic the cognitive functions associated with human mind. From simple problem solving and learning and functions like duplicating computer vision, making robotics, etc. Now it is poised to duplicating human mind as such and performing functions like understanding human speech. Understanding human speech is a great task actually. And communicating just like human beings with the machines. The pace of progress is mind-boggling, incredibly fast with the availability of this computing power, data processing technologies, etc. Now when we talk about natural speech communication from humans to human, it's a highly intelligent activity. We do not realize, we do it in daily life. But when you want to duplicate it with machines, then you will understand the complexity involved in this. Consider for a moment the process involved in this task. 
just think for a minute, you know, when you want to talk to somebody, what you do is the thoughts or the ideas come into the brain. In what form? Probably we do not know. But we know that they are converted into a kind of neural signals. And these neural signals are communicated through various processes, you know, and things like that. And gives rise to the motor actions of our articulatory system, other mechanical systems, which as a result produce an acoustic waveform, which goes as a speech. And then, when you hear it, the ear does a fantastic job. It analyzes, is just all the signal processing, processes it, extract the important information, feature extraction, etc. That again is converted into some kind of a neural form signals, goes to the brain through the auditory cortex, and then there it is understood by the brain, along with the memory functions that we have. So friends, it's a very complex process that we do when we communicate ourselves. Now think of, as an engineer, if you want to duplicate all these functions into machines, how complex the process would be. So this is a technology which requires interdisciplinary areas of knowledge and making a system complex which can function like a human being. However, this technology is language dependent. So something which has been developed for English or French or German or Japanese, you cannot duplicate it just like for our languages, Indian languages, Hindi or any other thing. Because when I was telling process of communication of his speech from one person to another person, the carrier is language. It's a linguistic code that we are actually communicating. So, unless this language code is also associated with all this process and gives a kind of a carrier platform, then we cannot uh, be successful in developing a complete system. So, it is a language dependent technology and we must understand the intricacies of the linguistics, phonetics and other associated uh, functions of the language. One thing I would like to mention is when we talk about India, India is a unique country in the whole world. Having large heritage and diversity of languages I have not found another country which has got so much diversity of languages and such a big heritage of languages and the culture associated with these languages. We know that there are 22 scheduled languages recognized by the government of India and 10 scripts written for it. But, as a matter of fact, there are about 630 languages in our country. And uh, how many? About 86 different scripts. Can you imagine? 630 languages and 86 scripts. These are official records, you know, from the survey I am giving you. So, the task is very large. It's a huge task which should be done in case we want to develop systems for our own languages. It is therefore extremely important and necessary that emphasis be laid to advance this research on Indian languages in a very serious manner. In the present conference, <coughs> the latest technologies of the world through our various sectors will be highlighted. We will also present the state of art of technology in the country, what is happening, and the gaps which have to be fulfilled so that you will, you will have a chance to know about all these things, the status and the gaps in the technologies. Uh, we would also like to have some collaborations with the foreign institutions and we request our foreign guests that they should think about collaborating for conducting this research for Indian languages along with of course their own knowledge of their language, technology and things things like that. Uh, this conference will inspire a lot of students who will attend and I would recommend that the government should take a serious note of this particular technology that it should be advanced in this country. And it 
is not only the government or the <coughs> research laboratories, it is the industry also. Uh, Dr. I forgot to mention you in the beginning, but the industry has to play a very big role in developing their systems and they have to work hand in hand with the <coughs> academic institutions and the industry to develop their systems. I once again congratulate the organizers headed by Dr. Amita Dev, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of this institute, and the efforts of Dr. Sharma and the whole team in organizing this conference. And congratulations to all of you for having this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. Now, I would like to introduce Professor Santoshi Nakamori. Professor Santoshi Nakamori is a professor of Graduate School of Information Sciences, Nara Institute of Science and Technology, Japan, and honorary professor of Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, Germany, and NATR Prague. He received his BS from Kyoto Institute of Technology and PhD from the renowned Kyoto, uh, Kyoto University. He is currently director of Data Driven Science Center an augmented human communication laboratory and a full professor of graduate school of information science at NAIST. He is interested in modeling and assistance of speech to speech translation and speech recognition. He is one of the leaders of speech to speech translation research and has been serving for various speech to speech translation research projects in the world. He has been a recipient of various national and international awards and has been a part of various editorial boards such as RIEEE. I now invite our expert and Reverend Professor Satoshi Nakamori to say a few words. I'm uh, Dev and also Professor Sharma Grawar for inviting me to the AIST uh, 2019. Uh, so it's a great honor for me to be here to, uh, to present the, our research activity. So after this uh, session, I will give a talk. So I would like to make my uh, message very short. So uh, I think the, uh, and also um, the relationship with the Professor Sham Agrawal is very long. So we are, our relationship was started, has started in 2006. And um, when we started the uh, speech translation consortium in Asia, so we, uh, eight countries in Asia, started to collaboratively uh, develop the speech to speech translation system. So India developed the uh, modules for India language, uh, 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 headed by Professor Nakagawa, and uh, for Japanese, we developed the module for Japanese by us. So we uh, connect the those of modules uh, and to make a one, one service um, for speech-to-speech -speech translation. So, uh, so this is very good uh, initiative, and uh, we, this kind of international collaboration will be uh, very uh, useful, and uh, we uh, get to know each other, and uh, then now I'm here to present our research activities. So uh, I'd like to introduce a little bit uh, of my, my myself. Uh, so in, I was, when I was uh, young, uh, like uh, 20, 25 years old, I'm, uh, I'm interested uh, in speech understanding at that time. Uh, but uh, it's, it was 1980 something, and uh, speech technology is not mature. And uh, we started, I started from the speech recognition research. And after 30 years, uh, speech recognition or uh, uh, speech synthesis technologies uh, uh, in, uh, improve the, uh, the, their performance by uh, deep neural network AI, so-called AI. And uh, now uh, we are going to, it's, now, it's a time to go to some more uh, higher level of natural language processing. So we are ready to start uh, uh, speech understanding or uh, speech communication uh, for a monolingual situation or speech understanding or speech communication for uh, multilingual situation over the different uh, languages. So I'd like to uh, introduce um, some of the to research topics in my talk, but uh, if you are, I hope you are interested in uh, my talk, and so 
I, I strongly encourage you to work on uh, speech uh, related or uh, speech spoken language technology research. And uh, I, I hope you, uh, to see you uh, in the next Inter Speech Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I now present our guest of honor, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, the Vice President and India Country Head of NXP. Along with successfully handling the company's operations all over India, sir is also spearheading three diverse R&D locations, Noida, Bangalore and Hyderabad, which comprise of nearly 1,800 employees and he is representing all NXP product groups. He is also a member of IESA Executive Council, which is the highest FX body for Indian Electronics and Semiconductors Association. A perfect amalgamation of modesty and high-end quality, sir is an inspiration to many budding professionals. I request sir to please come forward and kindly address the conference gathering. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Uh, those who don't know, I spent four years in the very building, almost 25 years ago, when it was used to be a daily college of engineering. And uh, I spent my four years from 92 to 96 in electronics and communication engineering. So it's a pride moment for me to come here in the same institute. Uh, and uh, honestly, it's very nostalgic. The moment when I entered the gate, nothing has changed. It seems like it was yesterday. So it's really a homecoming back for me and a bit of you. So uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you to all the organizing team uh, to make me part of this conference. Uh, before I start, I want to say that the topic of this conference is extremely relevant. Uh, we have several examples that Ma'am gave at the beginning about driverless cars working on the cutting edge technologies which will make driverless cars happen which will make many cool things happen that we are right now dreaming about. I want to mention that we all are lucky in a sense to go on in this era. And why? So if you think about it, the biggest invention that happened in the mankind, if you go back in time, it is probably an invention of a wheel that was more than 5,000 years back. And if you scale back and uh, do Google, Research will find that the major invention after that started happening maybe around late part of 1700 uh, where we had the first industrial revolution with the, all these power plants, turbine engines and after that another 100 years later you have a second major uh, things happening around mid 80s with the electricity invention and automobile invention in early 90s. The pace of invention was still about 100 years we were having something but why I say we are lucky in this order, every year something is happening. I'm sure most of the students here, when you were born, versus what you are today, you would have seen a major revolution in the smartphone industry, the internet, the IoT, and you know the, we are moving towards the super intelligence for artificial intelligence. So the topic itself is very relevant. And I would say, as an Indian, we were not very much visible in the first industrial revolution for various reasons, neither in the second. We started showing our talent, our impact to the world economy only in the third revolution, I would say, with the IT industry that started moving up in the India. But I would truly say the next one, which we say the fourth revolution starting right now, which will surely continue for another 50 to 100 years until we have robots and humanoids sitting around us in the next 10 to 20 years. It's a big, big opportunity for us to scale the boundaries and break the geographical boundaries because in today's era with the advent of technology, there is no barrier. The only barrier is our dream, our imagination. 